here. Take your Bibles, if you would, please. Take your Bibles, if you would, please. Exodus chapter 20. You pray for me this morning. I mean, for some reason, for some reason, um, my mouth is just very, very dry. And I don't know why it is. But it's just very, 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 very dry. No, it's not. It wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be humidity. It would be very wet. Um, anyway, let's read from the beginning. Let's read down to verse 15. Let's learn the Ten Commandments. How can we know how to keep the commandments? Now, I don't believe you keep the commandments to go to heaven, but I believe that you keep the commandments to have a better life. Amen? Isn't it better not to lie? It's a lot better not to lie. You don't have to cover anything else up either. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven uh, above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I am the Lord thy God for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And he means that. He means that. And showing mercy. Listen. God is a merciful God. Somebody say amen. 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 Somebody called me the other day with an issue. Serious issue in their life. And they just, they felt awful about it. They felt terrible about it. And I said, can I tell you something that... that you're just not getting a hold of. And they said, what is it? I said, God is a merciful God. God forgives people who call upon his name and ask God to forgive them. God, call, God forgives those who ask. Somebody say amen. amen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, the Bible says. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He didn't say who that applied to. He just said it. Amen. Amen. Now, he's a merciful God. You keep that in mind. Showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter nor thy, thy manservant nor thy maidservant. Nor thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth to see in all that in them is. And rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Uh, and hallowed it. Verse 12, honor thy father. Now we're going to transition. Remember, the, uh, there's two commandments in the New Testament that God said all the commandments hang upon these two. The first one was, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And the thing is, if you love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your might, you will not take his name in vain. You will not swear Jesus Christ everywhere you go. You will not have another God. If you love the Lord your God, you won't have an issue with these things. Five is a transitional one because we have... Two sets of fathers, two sets of mothers. Sounds like genetic experimentation, doesn't it? But I've, I've been 
had one set of parents that made me a sinner. And I've had God the Father that's made me righteous. Heaven is my mother. The, Jerusalem above is the mother of us all, the Bible says. Um, so this is the transitional one. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. By the way, and I, I, I keep mentioning this because it just blesses my heart. At the beginning of the Watchman broadcast this week, did you see the old man that was leading the singing? Did you see that old man? If you have not watched the Watchman broadcast that just came out this week, it came out like Monday, I think, or Tuesday or something like that. Before I started talking, I featured a video that Michael sent to me. He was, Michael was sitting there amongst them. He said, I don't even know who recorded this. But they were singing praises to God and there was an old man just squatted down there leading these younger men in song. He said, that old man was a hundred years old. And I, and I know I've told you that story before. But it just blesses my heart. For that man after a hundred years with all the heartache and hardship that he has endured in his life to still be praising God after a hundred years. Let that bless you. Amen. Now, uh, verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. Verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Verse 15. The Eighth Commandment, Thou shalt not steal. Deuteronomy 5, 19, the, which is uh, the, the mirror of the Ten Commandments, says, Neither shalt thou steal. Again, that word neither, and I got a letter from somebody, I don't know who it was, because I didn't, I didn't, if you're listening, I didn't read all your letter. And I don't even know who your name is. But they started chewing me out about how not all, I said all sins are the same in God's eyes. And they started chewing me out about how not all the sins are the same in God's eyes. Maybe if you'd spend your time reading your Bible instead of worrying about what I said, you'd find out how wrong you were and how right the Bible is. I don't care who you are or what you did. If you sinned, you're going to hell. And you need a Savior the same as everybody else needs a Savior. Somebody say amen. amen. That nonsense, I'm sick of it. I don't like it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I love these people. I thank you for them. God, these are my friends. My friends, Lord, I, I try to treat them right. I try to treat them nicely. I, I try not to get in their face. I, Lord, I certainly don't want to offend them. Father, you've made me aware of, a, of an offense Lord, that went back some 20 some odd years ago that I didn't even remember, Father, and I felt guilty about it ever since I found out about it. God, it bothers me. So I love my people. I love these people here in this church. So I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't, I don't want to, to break the fellowship, the sweet fellowship that we have between one another. But Father, you have given me the responsibility of saying what needs to be said. Regardless of who likes it, who doesn't. 
regardless of who's doing it and who's not. So, Father, I pray, dear God, that you would just give everyone uh, a, not a heart of stone, but a heart of clay, Father, this morning, God, that they would hear the words that you say to them and let it remold and refashion their heart and how they do things in their life. Father, we know that we know that the number one cause of all evil is the love of money. And we also know, Father, that we'll steal it if given an opportunity, if given a clean opportunity, we'll steal it. Father, I pray, dear God, that you would bless your word, honor your word, use your word, dear God, to help us straighten out our lives, straighten out whatever's wrong with us, God. If, there's, if there be anything in us, Lord, that violates the commandments of God, we ask you, God, to show it to us this morning. Or as we go about our life, one day this week, we'll go along and all of a sudden, the words that you spoke today, Father, would just hit them in a situation where they realize that, yes, they are in fact stealing. Father, just use this message and bless it for your kingdom's sake, your glory's sake, Father, not mine, not anybody else's, but just use it for your for your kingdom and your people. Bless us and give us grace, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. What is stealing? Somebody define stealing. If it doesn't belong to you, your hand should never touch it. If it, doesn't belong, if, it, if it was not specifically given to you and the person who handed it to you said, I am giving you this, it now belongs to you. You can keep it for the rest of your life and hand it down to your children and their children and their children after them. You, you can have this. Then it's yours. But if that has not been explicitly stated and, and said and, or put down on paper or something like that, then, it, then what happens is we assume that something belongs to us and we assume that we can keep it and have it and use it and do whatever we want with it. But it's not ours. We stole it. And it happens to a lot of people. A lot of people are guilty of stealing. My buddies. James Bonds. That was his name. James Bonds. And Andy Bonds. There used to be a butcher shop out here called Wilbert's Meat Market. Y'all remember Wilbert's Meat Market? Big old fat guy back in there cutting off pieces of pork fat and just... Reach in a bucket of pickled pig's feet and just pull one out. That's why he was this big around. Well, they told me James Bonds, 007, asked me had I ever taken any candy bars out of that store. And I said, no. And they said, well, me and Andy found out a way. We, we do it all the time. Really? Yeah, you can catch the 
the, where the candy bars are are out of sight from the uh, re cash register and you can grab them things, stick them in your back pocket and walk out and n nobody ever catch you. Wow! So as I've, he, he was, he, Andy was showing me how, how he did it. It's kind of backed up over there. We didn't know the lady was kind of watching. It had her eye on us. Mom and their mom was ordering some meat or something like that. And they was showing me how to stick it in my back pocket and my side pockets and everything like that. And as we walked past her on her way out the door, she said, what are you boys doing over there? Are you stealing candy? And Andy came up, he said, real quick, he said, no, we got this at another meat store. <laughs> now me, and I think Andy too, we ran around the side of that building and started flushing our pockets. So we don't get caught with the evidence. Did I ever tell you that story? I'm getting a whipping. I'm getting it. Get, get out the soap, she said. I'm telling you the thing I'm, I've done as a kid. I'm not telling you the things I've done as an adult. But thou shalt not steal means thou shalt not steal. And there's no age limit to it. There is no age limit to it. Turn to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. I know we seem to have spent a little time there, but as part of this, but boy, there's so much that rings true here. John chapter 10, verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. And all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. Notice how Jesus describes all of the people who, who took care of the people of Israel. They were all thieves and robbers. Every one of them stealing from you. And I'm going to ask you a question this morning. In your, in your honest opinion, how many politicians do you think as a percentage... Give me a percentage of the number of politicians that you think have their hand in the pork barrel stealing it. Do what? Eighty-seven. No, it's. I'm telling you. Once you get in public office, it becomes the easiest thing in the world to steal. Especially, especially if, your if your name is Clinton, do you ever get audited by the IRS? Never is going to happen. But let me tell you something. They can steal all the money in the world they want to and, that, and they can have it. And they're going to burn forever and ever and ever for it. And I'll say that about the Trumps. I'll say it about the Clintons. I'll say it about the Bidens. I'll say it about the Pelosi family. I'll say it about whoever. I don't care who it is. Corrupt thieves. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I'm the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Given, pasture that's given to them. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I'm the good shepherd. 
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Why? Because he gives to me freely. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside steel waters. He restoreth my soul. But he that, he that is in hireling, verse 12, and not the shepherd whose own sheep are, are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth he, because he is in hireling. Why is he there? To doing the job of a shepherd. What is, why is he there? Is he there really to protect the sheep? No. He's there to take the money. But not protect the sheep. Did you know that's stealing? Now. Let's get down to it. Because I got a list of things that qualify as stealing. If you get paid to do a job and you don't do the job while you're supposed to be doing the job and you take the money, you are stealing the money. Am I getting an amen from somebody? Hirelings don't, hirelings don't care. You know what gets me more than anything is somebody that works for a company. And when something is broken or, or part, of, part of what they're working on is lost. They don't care. It ain't my money. How much money is that old guy sitting in that office over there got? He's got enough money to buy 20,000 of these. What do I care? You ought to run him out and find somebody that will work. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is in hireling and not the shepherd who's owned the sheep or not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep, fleeth. And the wolf catcheth him and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and know and am known of mine. And as the father knoweth me, even so know I the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Now, I'm going to have, I'm, I'm in my mind as I'm reading this right now. I am, my heart is already starting to pump fast. My stomach is getting sour. My nerves are on edge. Because I'm going to say some things. It, here in a few minutes, I'm going, to, I'm going to say some things. To you people. You people. Here's some examples. Those who... Fill out their time sheet or their time card wrong. Not accidentally, but on purpose. You put down that you worked such and such hours, but the truth is you didn't work, you didn't, you didn't work. Those hours. You might have stood. And held the shovel up. But you didn't work. The hours. That's stealing. That's stealing. That's corruption. That stealing, uh, let me tell you, let me tell you what I saw. Here I am, a young man. I just got married to Lisa. And I started working in construction. 
and was making, this is 1987, so I'm making $7 an hour. That's the more, most money I've ever made in my life, $7 an hour. Was glad to get it. And Sterling, God used Sterling and Steve to teach me if my feet are standing still, I ain't working. You better be hopping, moving, jumping, arms, working, back, working, or you ain't worth paying. That old man helped teach me that. So we're inside painting a house, in, painting the inside of a house. The house next door has already been painted, finished out. The last thing they have to do is the, the electric company has to come and plug the meter up. So I see their truck, Ron, pull up to the front of the house at 10 o'clock. And I see the guys, two guys in the front of that truck, shut the truck off. For about an hour and a half, they got out, plugged the plug in. That took them probably 45 minutes. Got back in the truck. I watched them. I, I, as I, every time I ran out that door, I looked to see what they were doing. And after four hours, they finally turned that truck on and took off. And I had figured, I had figured now, I wasn't, I wasn't very smart. You can say amen to that. I wasn't very smart, but I had figured that somewhere, somewhere in a manual, union manual somewhere, it said that this particular job takes two men four hours to do. But I watched them. It didn't take two men four hours to do. It took two men about maybe an hour and a half. I'll give them an hour and a half. And the rest of the time, they just slept. You know what they did? They just stole money. Now, if your conscience can bear that, you just go right on ahead. But God said, thou shalt not steal. God said, thou shalt not steal. Stealing, stealing tools from your job site or time, stealing time from your job site or equipment or material from your work, stealing it, stealing it. I used to know a guy, my, my mom and dad knew the guy, he was a truck driver You know who I'm talking about, right, Mom? And he drove a, he drove a, 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 a truck for a uh, national known retail store that is no longer in business. I wonder why. He would steal contents out of the back of his truck, put them in the trunk of his car, Go around and sell the contents that he stole to people. Had a little side business going. So he's making whatever the union scale was for truckers at that time, plus whatever he was stealing. Uh, tax information, lying on your taxes. What did Jesus say? And he held a penny up. He said, whose inscription is, uh, is on here? Well, that's Caesar. He said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and render unto God what is God's. And if it belongs to Caesar, 
It does not belong to you. Borrowed money. Borrowed money. Loans. Borrowed books. I'm, boy, I'm guilty of this. If you've loaned me something and have not gotten it back, I sincerely apologize. I got to, I am, I am very sorry. I mean it. I am. Yeah, I'm bad about it. But not paying loans back. Now, let me, let me give you some mercy with the justice. There are legal ways to settle debts with companies. And if they will settle with you in a legal fashion, I'll, that's, that's giving you some mercy. God's a merciful God, isn't he? Does not God forgive debts? Okay. But when you just assume that it's okay, then you stole it. Outright, you just outright stole it. Uh, I don't know how bad this is now, but when the internet first really got going, people were stealing music, movies, books, downloading them illegally, right and left. Now, they've tried to fix it where you can't do that. People still do it. Good grief. What does it cost to rent a movie now online? Three, what, three bucks? You ain't got three bucks? To rent and watch a movie? Which probably you shouldn't watch anyway. Now I'm going to get to it. Robbing God. Who in the world would rob God? Let's go to it. Malachi chapter 3. Open your Bible up there. I want you to hear you. I want to hear your Bible open up. I want to hear the pages of your Bible going. I want you to get a pen out and go. Malachi chapter 3. Oh, pastor, I know what you're going to say about this. Now, this is in the Old Testament. That don't apply to us. I'm reading you the Ten Commandments. Which side of the Bible are they on? The old side. We're not under. We're not under the law. We're under grace. Malachi chapter three. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say. Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Now, I'm going to stop right here. And again, I, I, this is, I, I just been had this bad feeling on me today about having to say this. And in doing so, I want you to ask yourself the number of times that I have ever preached on tithing, giving, put money in the plate. You're not saved if you're not giving. How many times have I done that in the years that you've known me? Hardly ever. I won't say never. It is an assigned duty that I have. And I have to say it. 
I not only have to say it, I have to practice it. I tithe to the church from the check that the church just paid me. I tithe on that. Now that's, that kind of sounds ridiculous. No, it's, I, I got to do it. There were no exceptions and no exclusions. You know what the, the tithe was originally for in the Old Testament? It was for the maintenance of the Levite priesthood. Because God would not allow the Levites to ha- have land... And with land, you can raise sheep, you can raise cattle, you can raise wheat, you can raise, you can have a vineyard. With land, you can do whatever you want. You can become as wealthy as you want if you're good at it, if you had land. But God would not allow the Levites to own any land. Wherever they went, God said, no, the Levites do not get a parcel of land. God divided the Levites to live in each section, some of the Jews lived where the Manasseh people lived, and some Jews lived where the Judites lived, and, or some Levites lived where Ephraim lived, and some Levites lived over here where Dan lived, and places like that. God had them scattered around, and when it was their turn to do their duty in, in the ministry, they would go and do their duty, and they would receive their portion. God gave, God gave them a, ve- a really nice portion of every goat, every ox, every lamb, every chicken, um, every ounce of flour that came in, the oil, the olive oil that came in, the spices that came God gave them a really good portion so that they could either bring that in for themselves and use it. We got some kids playing in the foyer. I just want to make some people aware of that. Okay? So anyway. Yeah, they're probably not going to like me because I told on them. But anyway. God allowed the Levites to have a portion of whatever, what what all the other tribes brought in, they got a portion of it as their pay. That continues to this day. The pastor's labor is in the word of God. He should receive a portion of the tithes and the offerings and the free will offerings that come in. He should receive a portion of that. Okay, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Some some people get all high and mighty and say, ah, the preachers, they shouldn't, they always got their hand out. They shouldn't get anything. All that money's supposed to go to the poor. You, you don't know your Bible. You have not read your Bible. You don't, you have no idea what it's for. Now, having having said that, having made my apology for it, I'm telling you, you are robbing God. You are stealing from God. And God made it so simple that somebody who knows this much math can figure 10%. A dollar, 10%. Dime. $52. $5.20. See how easy that is? Let's read this. Will a man rob God, yet ye have robbed me. But you say, where and where have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You're cursed. You know what my preacher golf told me? Mom, I'll never forget this sermon as long as I live. You won't either. Preacher golf taught us. Brother Sterling, you probably remember it too. He said, watch this. You, you hold back your tithes from God. And all of a sudden... Your car breaks down. You got to take it to a mechanic who goes to a Bible believing church and he's going to take the money that you had to give him 
to fix your car and he's going to pay tithes on it. God's going to get it no matter what. And, and you're cursed because your car broke down. You want to live a cursed life or a blessed life? Which one? You are cursed with a curse for ye have robbed me even this whole nation. Bring ye all that Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Hey, what, did, what happened with the disciples when they did what Jesus told them to do about fishing? Cast your nets on the other side. Well, there ain't nothing over there. Just do it. Oh my goodness. We need help. We can't pull all these fish in. We're going to kill. We're going to break this boat in half. How many of you would raise your hand, say amen, hallelujah, shout, stand up, testify or whatever, that God's way when it comes to your finances are the best way? Amen. Amen. God said, verse 11, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. You know what that means? That if you will not pay tithes and offerings, God will send a devourer to devour your money. He said, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. Saith the Lord of hosts, and all nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, I'm going to throw this in here right now. Is America a wealthy nation? No. America is in so much debt right now. Not just the average American citizen, but it's government. We couldn't pay our debts. If they were called right now, we couldn't pay our debts as a nation. I don't think. So is that wealth? Mm -mm. It's not wealth. Ephesians 4.28, let him that stole... Yeah, everybody turn your Bible there and underline this, okay? Here's your grace, and I'm going to finish right here. Ephesians 4, 20, verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more. Underline that. Let him that has not been paying tithes and offerings start paying tithes and offerings. Let him who's been stealing from the government stop stealing from the government. You know why most, most contractors want government contracts? Because they are very lucrative. And they're well overpaid. Everybody knows that. Stop stealing from work. Young people. Hey, every, every child. Hey, up. Up here, look at me. Quit stealing my candy out of my office. No, 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 no. Don't laugh at it. Don't laugh at it. Quit stealing candy out of my office. Or I'll stop giving it out. Am I doing right, folks? And... Don't you dare steal from your mom and dad. Don't you dare steal from your classmates at school. Don't 
You listen to your preacher. Don't you dare steal anything. You know what God will do? You may, you may not get caught with that, but something else God's going to make sure you get caught with, and God is going to use somebody to whoop the fire out of you. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. You know what I like about Lisa and I are debt free. You know what I like about being debt free? So I like to give the waitress at the restaurant a bigger tip than she's expecting. See, I did that with my own sister. She worked at a as a waitress one time. She knows how it works. And I like the fact that if somebody's willing to work as a waiter or waitress, and if they work with their hands and do a good job, I don't mind giving them extra. I like, I like to have it so I can give it. And how do you think, you people sitting in these pews here, how do you think that we ended up feeding over 60,000 families last year lost two radio stations and had the money to replace two whole radio stations how do you think how do you think we did that it was god but it was god putting it on the hearts of all of the people online and some of you who had it to give, to give. It is far better to give than to receive. Amen? What did I do? Go through all my notes and lose that last, there it is. That last, last little note. I don't even have it anymore. I lost it. I want us to bow our heads. Let's, let's, close it. let's close it out this way. I want us to bow our heads. Apparently that wasn't the end of the message, but I'll make it that way. People, I'm guilty of it. I'm not going to stand up here with my nose stuck up in the air and try to make you think that I don't do it myself. It's in, our, it's in our depraved, wicked nature. It is. It is in our depraved, wicked, evil nature to steal. To figure out a way of, of getting gain, ill got and gain. So I've done it, you've done it. We've all done it. That's why he said, let him that stole steal no more. So if you want something, quit going in debt over everything. Wait till you have the money to buy it and then buy it. That way you're not stealing. Stealing what doesn't belong to you. Father, I love you. I thank you, Lord, for dealing with my heart today. I'm not perfect and righteous in this issue. I'm not. God, I couldn't, I couldn't stand up here 
and act a Lord over these people, a judge over these people, as if I had never done these things wrong with a clear conscience. So, Father, forgive me wherein I have stolen and taken what I had no right to take. Father, I pray, dear God, that you would just smite our heart as we go throughout our week, Father, on things, God, that, that we are guilty of stealing. And we, we don't we, we, we can't think of it now because we just we're trying to listen to the message. We're trying to pray. But some someday this week, we're going to do something and our hands are going to be part of something that they shouldn't be. And you're going to smite our heart. And you're going to say that's you're stealing that, aren't you? You're taking that, aren't you? That doesn't belong to you. And you're you're putting it in your pocket. So God, teach us along the way of our life. From the youngest one of us that can listen. To the oldest one of us. Who will hear. God, that it's not right to steal. And just because others are doing it. And getting away with it does not make it right. Doesn't matter if it's allowable in the rule book. Doesn't matter if it's allowable because people's backs are turned deliberately and you can get away with it. Doesn't matter. You're watching, God. You're watching. And our conscience, Father won't let us get away with it. So Father, thank you for dealing with us, speaking to us. God, we're not going to leave this life, this world with any of it. In fact, Father, I, I, would, I, I would not, I would not want to lose my soul over a billion dollars, much less a penny. I would not want to be cursed all the days of my life and lose my soul. So God, teach us what's important. Teach us what's right. Help us to teach it to our children. Father, our children are watching us and they watch they watch us when we steal things and do things that are not right. And God, help us, dear God, smite our hearts when we realize that our children just watched us take something that wasn't ours. God, just deal with your people today. That's all I ask. We ask this in Jesus' name and all of God's people said. Amen. Stand to your feet, please.